Marinero, the sick podcast, CF Montreal talk. Today, the mid-season report by CF Montreal sporting director, Olivier Renard, and my partner in crime, Jeremy Filosa, was there to take it all in. We'll react to what was said, some comments, and we'll also talk about CONCACAF Nations League. It's a big one tonight. Our Canadians men's national team versus Panama at 7 p.m. Live from Las Vegas on TV. No, it's not on TV. It's on a streaming service, but we'll preview it anyway. We'll talk about CF Montreal. We'll talk about the Canadians men's national team. It's all coming up. Marinero and Filosa, the sick podcast, CF Montreal talk. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the sick podcast. CF Montreal talk. Here's the chance. Here's the chance. Let's go. the goal. Absolutely incredible. Cameron Porter delivers the goal. The sickest CF Montreal podcast. It's gonna be sick. Sick, sick, sick. Marinero, the sick podcast, CF Montreal talk. Let me bring in Jeremy Filosa of 98.5 FM, as well as EMFC Dads. Yo, Jeremy, how are you? Doing great, my friend. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you for doing this. You can follow us on YouTube, of course. Subscribe to our channel. And you can check us out on Twitter at SickPod, CFMTL. All right. So Jeremy was earlier this morning that CF Montreal Sporting Director Olivier Renard had a chance to speak with members of the media for what was the, the mid-season report, per se, even though he said he didn't really like to get into that. Uh, but a lot of questions were asked. A lot of answers were given. So this is the way it's going to go down, Jeremy. All right. Yep. I have some audio clips in English. We'll play one at a time. We'll play a clip. We'll respond to it. Then we'll play another clip. We'll respond to it. And should there be things that were said that weren't part of those clips because they were probably asked en français and not in English, at that point, I'll ask you to be able to add to what you were able to pick up. So without further ado, let's play clip number one. You expected a difficult or a difficult start to the season, a complicated start. What do you think needs to be done from either a sporting perspective, a, a logistical perspective, to mitigate that? Given that it's been, you know, a few years in a row now where it's been a, a difficult start to the year. Okay, but for no, there was not the same. Uh, I would say the same stress. No, we know that uh, three, four important. We decide to sell the players. We know that was a new staff, technical staff. That was, that's why. Um, my my expectation there was i was a little bit uh, not afraid about the situation but we knew that it was that, that would be difficult the other year was more about the starting on the road every games uh, the the pre-season on the turf here and on the on the olympic stadium that will be every year the same thing but now there was maybe a little bit more uh, problematic that uh, we knew that there was a new new atmosphere that the player have to understand why we changed the staff why we changed the many players and there was more the stress about the players and the and the journalists also jeremy olivier renard skeptical with the start of the season because of course there was a new coaching staff a new head coach uh, a new system and some key players were actually sold your thoughts yeah i mean listen i i understand what he's saying they had lost a lot of players uh and that's true but the reality is this is in their hands i mean if the team decides not to invest the necessary money in the winter in order to get the players that they need to start the season. When he says the media uh, uh, showed a lot of stress, well, that's our job to go out there and say that at this moment in time, this team is not going to be competitive the way it is, uh, that, 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 that moves need to be made, that players need to be acquired. So, you know, it, it, it it goes one goes with the other. I mean, this is our job to tell people listening to us that too many pieces are missing and it's going to be tough for them to compete if they don't make a move. It was uh, a roster that was uh, young and inexperienced at the beginning of the season. A lot of young players were thrown into the fire, he which said, he actually yet he talked about it as well. He said it wasn't ideal. Uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, I, I guess what he said is, is true. And what you're saying is true as well. I yeah. mean, members of the media have to say, listen, this team, if this is going to be the team, it's not going to be good enough. And at one point he realized it too, and he pulled the trigger on that trade, but he also said that it's a trade that he wanted to get done. He had identified Bryce Duke for quite some time, mm -hmm. but 
you know, um, there's a few things that needed to take place in order for that deal to get done, timing uh, and uh, and uh, logistics and all that stuff. They were able to get it done. Let's uh, let's play another clip. Looking in July, the next window is in July, correct if I'm wrong. Maybe looking somehow to replace him in that striker position. But everybody know that uh, Rommel is uh, a key player for us. Uh, every season, Rommel has a uh, big injury. Last 15 goals, I think, in the competition. Uh, we miss, we miss Rommel on the field. Everybody know that. But we still pay Rommel. It's not that his injury that we, do, we have the, all the budget from this contract that we can have direct uh, the possibility to, to, to take a new players. But that's also the fact that we, we will uh, reflect uh, the time that we have uh, for the transfer window. And if we have the opportunity to bring the, the right players, that don't mean that is uh, the striker of uh, left back, of right back, of goalkeeper, we will see. The important is uh, that uh, the, the, the team will be better if we take uh, the decision to move. But about Romel, everybody knows that Romel is an important player and uh, now he's working uh, outside Montreal to, to be fit as soon as possible. And uh, we are waiting for that. Jeremy? So listen, you know, I don't think they're 100% happy with the fact that Romel Kyoto decided to go rehab in Honduras. And actually, he shared some images of himself uh, in Miami these last couple of days on social media. And when I asked a follow-up question on that subject in French later on, uh, you know, he said, you know, he prefers to be uh, rehabbing a little bit everywhere in the world, basically meaning, you know, I, I think they would have liked for him to stay here and rehab in Montreal. Will that have an effect on the ultimate decision on whether they keep him or not? I don't know. I think they're leaning towards not bringing him back. But as we saw last year, and the logical thing would be to say, if they're not going to bring him back, and we know that he makes a million dollars, could we not spend that money this summer right away, knowing that that money is going to be freed up at the end of December? And if you remember last year, we knew that guys like Bjorn Johnson weren't coming back, et cetera, et cetera. And they were not given the green light to spend that money in the summer. If you remember well, the only addition they made was Chinonzo 04. So I'm not expecting them to reinvest that million dollars this summer. I don't even yeah. know if we can expect them to reinvest that money at all. We'll see. Jeremy, he wouldn't be the first player to do his rehabilitation elsewhere, and he's not going to do the last. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Matko recently was in Argentina yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I believe once upon a time, Zlatan Ibrahimovic got operated <clears throat> And uh, I believe once upon a time, Mario Bellatelli got operated. I'm just bringing up a couple of names just for the sake of bringing them up. Yep. They both got operated in the United States. I, I, I mean, I, I think I think um, Ibrahimovic was in Pittsburgh or something, and I think Bellatelli was like somewhere in Vermont or something like that. And and they both actually stuck around for quite a bit to continue their rehabilitation there. I believe I could be wrong. What I'm gathering from this, though. And I'm going to tell you what it is, is that I don't think that they have a problem that maybe he's doing some of his rehab somewhere else or with another specialist. Mm -hmm. It's just that if he was closer to home, they would probably know a little bit more of his whereabouts. They're probably wondering, is this guy, you know, professional 24 hours a day, or is this guy in Honduras half on a rehabilitation, half yeah. On a vacation, you know what I'm trying to yeah, say. But yeah, but the only and you know what, and Olivier mentioned that that he said, you know, he said I can't believe that a player whose contract is up at the end of the year and he is playing for his next contract, he will be playing for his next contract, would not be taking this rehab seriously. So I think he's assuming that the player is. Nevertheless, I think they would have liked to have him close to home, and uh, you know, they're 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 hoping that during the, 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 the final playoff push uh, at the end of the summer or at the beginning of the fall, that they'll be able to, uh, to count on him to finish out this year. Jeremy, if I'm Olivier Renard, I have already a pretty good idea of whether or not this player wants to be back. You, you would know if, you know if a discussion has taken place or not, and maybe this injury has set them back. I get it. But if the decision is made that this player is not going to be back, they have to bring in his replacement this summer. They have to. Why? Why? What are you going to do? You're going to wait to bring in a replacement next summer 
before the season starts to see whether or not, you know, you can give that player that break in period, that new player to come in, to get adapted to the city, the culture, the style of play, his teammates and all that stuff in the league. And then by next year, you know, that player is already adapted. Don't you think? I agree with you 100%, but this is not what the team has shown us in the past. Last year, they knew Georgie was going to leave. He, he, they didn't have a replacement for him right away. They brought in Bryce Duke this year. Mind you, they thought that Matko was going to be the man. They, Matko uh, was going to be the guy, and there yeah. was an injury that set him back in preseason. Yeah. So, you know, uh, Bjorn Johnson was out the whole year. They didn't replace him in the summer. They didn't even replace him now. So I, I, I agree with you 100%, and that's exactly what I would do. The way that the team has been managing things over the last couple of years, we should not expect that to happen. Unless they believe they have a replacement in-house already for Romel Kyoto. And based on what we've seen, I'm sorry, it's not we the have case. A... <laughs> I don't even know why we would ask ourselves that question, but yeah, I will, there's, I will, there's, no, there's no Romel Kyoto in-house right now. I will say this, though. Mason Toy did have a great last game, but it's sure. one, and you have to do it over the course of a season. I believe exactly. he is an upgrade. Anchanosa 4 and uh, Sanuzi Ibrahim, with all due yeah, respect I agree. to them. I agree. All right, okay, let's play another clip. But I, I am very proud about what uh, Jonathan is doing, uh, about also what the club decides with him. He is, uh, he is on the field. He deserves to have uh, all the... the Accolades, praise. Okay, wait, that. Uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, can you say that, say that again? <laughs> Accolades, praise. Yeah, that he is on the field. I am not playing. He is playing, but it's not... The Jonathan Sirois, the, the, the project from Jonathan, don't start yesterday. When we took the decision to put him on loan for two seasons, it's not, about, not only about him, also about Shanrea, about uh, uh, what we are doing now with uh, Rida Zouir, uh, with uh, Jean-Anne Lassie also, uh, that they go outside Montreal to learn to be a man, to learn to play, to not to play like Mathieu Chanrea did for two, three years season, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It's important that these guys of players play every week. And uh, that's why now he has the chance and, uh, and he took his chance. Uh, that's why we know that we don't have the MNS Pro Next, but the philosophy of the club is another way to, to make our young player better. And that's what we, we did with, uh, with Jonathan. And it's also important that the other young guys from the academy understand what they can do in the future. All right, there you have it. Your thoughts on uh, what he talked well, about. Every, every chance he has to... <laughs> Uh, to talk about uh, loaning out players being important to him, and that's part of their development. We hear him say it often, right, Jeremy? He reinforces it, and you know why he does it, right? Of you know course. why he does it? Because everyone, uh, or mostly everyone, l l let's just put it this way, okay? A lot of people, players, parents, family members, are complaining about what's going on at the academy level and not having... Yeah. Uh, the resources, notably, of course, with the reserve team and not having an MLS Next Pro. So it's his way of getting out the message that we don't have MLS Next Pro, but we can loan you out to USL. We can loan you out to CPL. Look, it looked, it worked for Jonathan Serrois. So far, it's working for Redis Uyir. Trust us, we know what we're doing. That's the message. But 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 uh, we're all okay with that. I mean, and and Tony, other teams that have MLS Next Pro teams also loan out players, by the way, right? That one doesn't stop you from doing the other. No. So they're lo they're loaning out players. Yeah. Uh, it worked out well for Sirwa. Uh, let's hope it works out well for, for Sean Rea and everything. And that's all fine. But like you mentioned, I think every time he has a player that comes back from CPL and does well, he tries to reinforce that because he knows that everybody's critical about the fact that they don't have an MLS Next Pro. The, the, the Where that causes a problem is when you have you know, uh, 12 games in 36 days or whatever it was, 11 games in 36 days, where if you have a need, an urgency, you cannot call somebody up from Ottawa or San Antonio or, and say, hey, listen, we're stuck here. We need you. Uh, can you play? But when you have an MLS Next Pro, uh, those guys are under contract. They're paid as professionals, and they can come help you right away. That's the main difference. As for Sirois, you know, he, he mentioned that, you know, not, not that he was disappointed, but that, that he thought that Sirois, uh, you know, could have made the national team for this um, Nations League uh, run. Uh, but he is convinced that uh, Sirois has everything necessary to be on uh, Team Canada's roster in the very near future. I have, um, just to reiterate on what Olivier Renard was saying, 
I have absolutely no problem at all with loaning out players the way they did. They are right. When they loan them out to CPL, it's a good thing. When they loan them out to USL, it's a good thing. They gain valuable experience. They become men. They play. They need to play. I agree with Olivier Renard on all of that. Yeah. But what about Uh, the other guys? what 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 I disagree with is that a lot of players in the academy, especially with the reserve team, are just there to fill numbers, and everyone knows it. I mean, and then once June 30th comes around and they call up the younger players because they don't have another age group in between that gets abolished, a bunch of players come up. They already know who's going to be let go either in about a month or so or who will be let go in the summer. I don't agree with that philosophy. I don't agree with the way they identify talent. The scouting of the academy has been extremely weak weak for many, many years. Uh, take a look at, uh, you know, Ishmael Kani never made the academy. I mean, uh, three times he tried. The list goes on and on of players. Uh, there are players that have been recommended they didn't take, and then we realized they were very, very good players. I don't agree with the fact that their academy teams uh, at around this time of year, they end up releasing certain birth years, 10 players, 11 players, 12 players. What does that say about the identification of talent? What does that say about the development of talent? What does that say regarding the patience or lack thereof towards the players? Uh, I don't agree with the philosophy. Right now, the philosophy is if the kid is under six foot, they probably don't want the kid uh, because they're going with big, strong players because, um, you know, uh, that's the way players are identified nowadays. Uh, Mind-boggling considering that the best player to ever play the game is like five foot six uh mm-hmm. but uh but anyway uh and, and there's i i, I don't I, you know i i agree i i think that the academy especially the reserve team should have the second best coach in the city like the best coach should be the one who's coaching the first team and the second best coach in the entire city and the entire province should be coaching the reserves and clearly that's not the case uh i i believe that the uh uh um you got to be playing a certain type of football as well, and they don't play it very well. And anyway, let's you know, let's it's we better off. We 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 digress. They're they're right about loaning the players to yep. CPL. They're right. They're right about loaning the players to uh, USL. They're right uh, that they have to make their bones. They're right that they become men. They're right that they have to play. They're right. Uh, a lot of everything else is really not right. But you know what? The only way is up. I mean, it can't really get. Worse. Okay, uh, let's play another clip. At the start of the year, would you say you're satisfied with the way things are going so far, or you expect, did you expect more? I never satisfied. Uh, we can be better, but uh, like I explained before, with the the last 14 games, uh, we did very well. I know we did well, not very well. And uh, if the rest of the season we have the same uh, the same result like the last 15 games, we will be without problem in the, in the playoff. That's the first intention from the club to participate on the playoff and after to make uh, the best for the rest of the season. Jeremy's right. 9-4-1 and one in their last 14. If their next 14 are 9-4-1, and one, see if yep. Montreal will go to the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. And you know what? I think uh, the, the, the rest of the schedule is going to be a little bit more light. It's going to be a bit more normal. So um, what we're going to hope here is that they can start going on the road and being a little bit more aggressive because this year, it's been insane how, you know, uh, teams cannot win on the road in this league. It's not just Montreal. It's everybody else, too. But I think the fact that you're playing every three days uh, forbids you from doing that because you're going on the road and you're thinking to yourself, let's just try to keep the game at bay. Let's try to stay close and let's see if we can open it up only in the second half, maybe pick up a point. But now that, the you know, the, the, the traveling is going to be less, uh, the schedule is going to be lighter, you have to start adapting that mentality going on the road just the way that Wilfred Nancy did last year and saying we got to have that mentality that, as if we're playing at home. You know, we want to be aggressive. We want to win. We want to be first on the ball. So let's see if they can do that because that's going to be an important part of their game if they are uh, to make uh, the, the postseason. A couple of other things that you may not have heard um, in English is... Um, we, we have one more if we can. If you want okay. to hold this thought, we got one more audio yeah. clip, okay? It okay. might be this is the one you're talking about. Let's play it. Okay. We'll go from there. J'espère encore avoir un meilleur football que ce que nous faisons actuellement. Mais on vient de tellement loin là avec des situations un peu tendues à gauche à droite que l'important est de prendre les points. Et quand il y aura un petit peu le, le bateau euh, va reprendre son rythme de croisière, j'espère que les joueurs aussi vont, vont retrouver un rythme ou un style de jeu qui, 
qui, qui je veux moi personnellement et le club euh, euh, atteindre. Après c'est vrai qu'on sait que le coach est venu avec des idées un peu plus directes vers l'avant, mais, euh, mais il est d'accord avec moi aussi, parce que ça c'est des choses que nous, nous avons discuté avant sa signature, de ce qu'on aimerait bien avoir sur le terrain, au-delà de la victoire ou de la défaite. C'est un style de jeu particulier qu'on avait réussi à avoir. Et euh, on a par moments cela, plus souvent à la maison qu'à qu l'extérieur. Ça c'est encore des choses où on doit parler, mais c'est vrai que la Ligue est est divisé un petit peu en deux à ce niveau-là pour le moment. Je ne sais pas pour quelle raison, parce que la saison dernière, je crois qu'un petit peu tout le monde, pas seulement à Montréal, gagnait beaucoup à l'extérieur. Je pensais que c'est la Covid qui avait fait qu'il n'y avait plus de matchs extérieurs et domicile à force de jouer dans des stades vides. Là, apparemment, c'est reparti comme avant dans la Ligue. Donc, mais nous, on doit, on, doit, on doit faire beaucoup mieux à l'extérieur. On ne doit pas s'écrouler dès qu'on est mené. Parce que je crois que depuis le début de saison, à chaque fois qu'on a mené, on, on arrive souvent à prendre des points. Et par contre, l'inverse est vrai aussi. Et la saison dernière... We can cut it. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, because the, so, the gist of what he said, I actually liked was at the beginning and I'm going to get into yes. it. I'll translate for the benefit of, of course, our viewers who are watching. And he said, and I'm encouraged by what Olivier Renard said, uh, because he said in his opinion, they still don't have a style of football that he wants. And he said, the coach knows this because I had told them from the beginning I wanted a certain style of football. And uh, and yes, he told me his intentions were to play a little bit more direct uh, from an offensive standpoint. And at times, we show the type of football that I want more often than not at home, not very often on the road where we need to play better on the road. But let's see if we can get that right now. We want to pick up as many points as we can. But at some point here, I want us to be playing the football that I want to see. And Jeremy, I'm encouraged by this because, uh, yes, points are the most important thing because it's a it's a results-oriented league, obviously. The style of football, we've talked about it on a couple of occasions, Jeremy. And the reason why I think it's important, too, is that think about the philosophy of the club, Jeremy, that they want to play young players, they want to develop them, uh, and then at one point they want to increase their value And they want to be able to sell them, of course, for a profit. How do you do that? Well, you can do it many ways. One way you can do it is by getting the players minutes. Obviously, mm -hmm. the more minutes they play, the more games they start, the more action they get, the more their value goes up. I understand all that. When you win, everyone looks better. That's good, too. But when you're playing a style of football where you're touching the ball a lot, where You know, you're getting so many touches in a game, a pass here, a pass there, a completed pass, a completed pass, a completed pass, higher percentages. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have more It time to good. show what you can do. You obviously are going to gain more value than if you. we hardly see you with the ball, but there's one long ball and boom, there's a shot. And I, I think this could be one of the reasons why, Jeremy, too. Well, yeah, and the thing is, you know, they haven't really had time to work on stuff like this because they've basically haven't practiced in about five weeks because there hasn't been time because all they've been doing is playing and resting. That's it. So let's hope that from now on, and that's exactly the point that I wanted to bring earlier on, I didn't know you had this clip, was about the quality of play and the style of play. So, uh, you know, I, I said it last week on the podcast, uh, when this team plays on the road, they are not watchable. It's not watchable. It's painful to watch. And I think they... They have a sort of a blueprint of what they want to do when they do play at home. Uh, but now they got to bring this on the road. And as you mentioned, you know, I, I, I have a hard time, Tony, understanding why when Losada was hired, they accepted this. Because he said, I want to play faster going up. But if I was Olivier Renard and I was Vasily, I would have told him, listen, Hernan, with all due respect... We have a formula here that we think works, and we want to go with that. So if you're going to be coaching here, this is what we want. Now, at the beginning... Yeah, but, then, but then he wasn't going to end up being the guy, Jeremy, because so, that's, so, that's so not it's him. Somebody else. So it's somebody else. Because, Tony, I mean, you, you finished third in, in all of the MLS, second in the Eastern Conference. Why would you change a winning formula? And if he doesn't want to play that style, then maybe it's somebody else that takes over. Because that, they sold it to us at the beginning of the year that it was just 
a minor adjustment that we were going to try yeah, to but play. Jeremy, if the days are long gone, a minor of, adjustment. Jeremy, if the days are long gone of paying a Remy guard as much as you used to pay him and paying a Materi Henri as much as you used to pay him, you know, at that point, with the amount of money that you're paying, uh, you know, it's 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 either Hernan Lasada or uh, Tony Marinaro and Jeremy Filosa. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, no, it could have been Laurent Sima. I mean, I know it's he's got very little experience. Not ready uh, yet. No, not ready yet. I agree with you. But ha had Laurent Sima had two or three more years under his belt as an assistant coach, I would have said, Laurent, you know what we're doing here? You've yeah. been doing it for a few years. Well, we want you to keep doing and, it. And, and I think happy to do it. I think he could be a coach one day. Two very quick ones yes. before we get to Nations League. All right. Okay. Yeah, two very yeah. quick ones. Number one, what does it sound like in terms of the uh of the summer mercado? Did, did he give away anything? Yeah, so, I mean, they repeated basically the same thing that, that they've been repeating over the last couple of years. You know, he specifically said it's not because Inter-Miami is is bringing in Lionel Messi that we're going to change our philosophy. Our philosophy remains the same. And he said, that's not my philosophy. This is the philosophy that was imposed on me okay. by the organization. He said that very yeah. clearly. Obviously, they're going to look at trying to improve the team. But as I mentioned, Tony, in, in for me, okay, I, I'm not going to be here podcasting and trying to make people believe that we're bringing in this guy and that guy and that other guy, because it hasn't been the case over the last couple of years. So uh, uh, the, 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 the transactions they do make in the summer are probably going to be for players that you've never heard of. Uh, so that's going to be continuing to be the, the, the trend here. So yeah, they're going to look at improving the team, but look, they were also looking at improving the team last year. In and a year where they had a chance of winning the uh, cup. And uh, they all they did was bring Chinonzo Chino for and loan him yeah. out to Belgium. He dismissed uh, Eden Hazard, I think, right? He said he's yes. his former teammate. They play with the Belgian national team yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. But he doesn't even know if Hazard wants to keep on playing. And if he does, he's no. going to get a lot of offers. But he, he kind of dismissed that. And in ending, said, I he said there's been zero conversations. Zero. zero conversations. Okay. I think he said that it is possible that he does with one or two more players the same thing that he did with Reda Zuir. Yeah. And that is loaned them out the way he loaned Rita out. In your yeah, opinion, yeah. he didn't give yeah. any names. In your opinion, based on his entire scrum, what he said, some of the things he said, yeah. how many players do you think he will loan out and who do you think are um, most susceptible? Well, listen, we asked the question at camp. I specifically asked the question, is there a plan to loan out a guy like Vilsain uh, to somewhere in the CPL? They said no. So this was their answer in February when I went to Florida. But at this moment in time, I would say if there's one player that they might be considering loaning out, it might be him because we know he has the quality. We know he has the capabilities. Uh, now, if he can show it in a professional league somewhere, it could be CPL, uh, coming back here might be, uh, you know, might be opening a door for him to be uh, a starter as of next year. I don't know. We'll see. But as I mentioned, they told us last year that it was not in the cards, or they told us in February it was not in the cards to loan him out. CONCACAF Nations League, if you want to watch it, you're either going to have to be in Las Vegas tonight or you're going to have to watch it on your streaming service with yeah. One Soccer. It's the Canadian men's national team versus Panama. It gets going at 7 o'clock. Your thoughts? I'm very excited about this, uh, Tony. I'm so, so, so disappointed that nobody's talking about it again. Uh, Monsieur, Madame, tout le monde will not be able to sit in front of their TV and watch their national team tonight. That is a crime, if you ask me. Every person in every country in the world should be able to sit in front of their television when their national team is playing and enjoy the game. It's not the case here in Canada. This is um, this is historic for Canada. So they've never been in this position in the Nations League. Of course, it's a tournament that's you know recent. We ha we can say that, but this is a an opportunity for Canada. First of all. They're on the right side of the of the board because they're facing Panama in the semifinal tonight. The other semifinal is Mexico versus USA. So they have the clearer and easier path down to the final. Doesn't mean they're going to win it. They earned that position. Uh -huh. because they have been in the last year the best CONCACAF team. So uh, good, for, good on them. But this is a clear and cut opportunity for them to lift a trophy together. And this is what John Herndon wants to start doing I, I had a chance to be on a Zoom call yesterday, and for him, it is imperial that this team starts lifting cups. The disadvantage that they have is that Panama, Mexico, and USA have all played, recently played a friendly. Canada has not been able to play a friendly. So they're coming in cold. You know, none of these guys have played together in months now. So that's going to be a bit of a disadvantage. Panama is not going to be an easy target tonight. 
That's for sure. But I think they have the grit. I have they have the the desire and the will to to really cement the fact that they are the best soccer nation in CONCACAF right now and they deserve respect and it's all good and dandy to have qualified for the World Cup but the reality is you have, you didn't lift a trophy there you want to be the champions of the Nations League it's going to be in a great atmosphere in Las Vegas in a 60,000 seat uh, stadium well, yeah. Raiders home Allegiance Field uh, I would have liked to have gone Tony circumstances have made that it was not possible for me to go but um, very, very, very excited, despite the fact that there are no CF Montreal representatives in uh, tonight's uh, game. Jeremy, and ending, there's a lot of excitement though around the group for for many reasons, uh, because uh, Jonathan David's coming off an incredible season, of course, in Ligue 1 France with uh, Lille. And there's talk that he's going to be uh, uh, some kind of mega transfer either to La Liga or the English Premier League. Um Kyle Lahren did exceptionally well with uh, Valladolid, and it looks like uh, they're going to buy out um, uh, what they have to buy out with him to retain his rights, but then sell him uh, to another big club, and we'll see who they sell him to. Alfonso Davies' his name is being talked about with Real Madrid. If it's not this summer, it'll probably be next summer, Real Madrid, or, you know, if... You know, if you're going to leave Bayern to go to a bigger club, I mean, there's not too many bigger ones than Bayern, obviously. There's talk of Ishmael Kane going from Watford to Udinese, who, of course, have the same owner and Atiba playing in his last couple of games with uh, with uh, a Canadian's man, a, a Team Canada jersey. So there's so much excitement around this group, Jeremy. I share your enthusiasm. And once again, it's too bad the game's not on television. But like you, I will be watching it on my streaming service with One Soccer. Jeremy, yep. thanks for doing this, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right, take care. All right, there you have it. Jeremy Filosa, VMFC at Edzio and 98.5. I'm Marinero. It's the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk. You can watch us on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and check us out on Twitter at SickPod, CFMTL. Ciao for now. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast, CF Montreal Talk on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.